Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be talking about a type of engine that can convert heat into rotary motion. The Stirling engines were first developed and patented in the year 1816 by an Irish scientist, Robert Stirling. The 19th century was the peak of the Industrial Revolution. The steam engine was the main driving force of the Industrial Revolution. The working of the steam engine was fairly simple. Convert water into steam by boiling water inside huge boilers. Now use the steam to drive huge pistons. This technology was the backbone of the industrial revolution, but it had its fair share of problems. More than often, the boilers were manned by unskilled workers or the boilers were made of subpar materials. This led to boiler explosions, which killed thousands of people in Britain. Robert Stirling wanted to create a much safer engine that did not have the risk factor of the steam engines. This led to the creation of the Stirling engine or the hot air engine. The working of a Stirling engine is fairly simple. Let's assume we have a closed cylinder which is sealed at one end and has a movable piston on the other end. With the piston held in a position, we heat the head of the cylinder. This heats up the air inside the cylinder and pressure builds up. This pressure pushes the piston back until the pressure inside equals one atmosphere. Now, the heat is turned off and we cool the cylinder. This causes the air to cool down and in turn reduce its volume. This creates a partial vacuum which sucks the piston inward. With this continuous heating and cooling, we have obtained the basic motion of the piston. But this method of obtaining motion is extremely inefficient and removes the entire point of having an engine. To increase the working efficiency, Robert Stirling introduced the displacer. The displacer is used to shuttle the air between the hot end and the cold end of the cylinder. This allows us to do both heating and cooling in a single cylinder at the same time. This drastically increases the working efficiency of the Stirling engine. The Stirling engines had very high RPM but very less torque. This was overcome by pressurizing the air inside the cylinder to higher pressures. The Stirling engine saw most of its usage in the late 19th century where it was slowly replaced by small internal combustion engines and electric motors. The Stirling engine was brought back to life in 1952 when Philips released a small Stirling engine generator powered by wood shavings. This generator was able to produce 300 watts of power and rotated at 1500 RPM. This project was a huge failure for Philips as many people opted for more powerful and compact petrol generators. The Stirling engine was again revived in 1982 when NASA did some research on increasing the working efficiency of automobiles. Testing was done on an ordinary car where the IC engine was replaced with a Stirling engine. The engine reached a rated efficiency of 40% against the 20% of conventional IC engines. The car also had a mileage of 20 km per liter. This was much higher than any four-wheeler at that time. This was achieved by replacing the air with helium as the working fluid. Since helium was much lighter than air, much less energy was expended in moving the air and more energy was spent in moving the piston. Even though the study to replace the Stirling engines was a success, it wasn't very feasible and had a few disadvantages. Stirling engines were much heavier and more expensive than IC engines of the same power. This meant that the cars which had them were a bit more expensive than their IC engine counterparts. The working fluid, helium, was also very hard to synthesize for mass production. So a few prototypes with hydrogen, the working fluid, were made. Since hydrogen is a very dangerous gas, the idea was also dropped. The Stirling engine is currently being used in submarines due to extreme smooth and noiseless functioning. Sweden's Gotland-class submarines use a hybrid diesel-electric Stirling engine. To see a working model of a miniature Stirling engine, check out the link in the description below. Well, that's it guys. Hope you understood the working behind the Stirling engine. We'll meet again in the next one. Bye.